<laughs> Why am I me? Oh, get him, Holy Ghost. Anybody else to see this, take what you need. Why are you you? Because that's how God made you. But see, here's the thing, though. There are three ways that you have to decide which way to see yourself. You can see yourself through your eyes, and we see that sometimes we can be so critical on ourselves, right? Sometimes we will make decisions that was the best decision at that moment, depending on the mindset that we was in, right? And then later on, we'll look back at it, and we'll condemn ourselves and be like, man, that was stupid. That was dumb. But that at that moment, in our mindset, that was the best decision to make, right? We could have been making the decision out of survival mode. Also, you can look at yourself through the eyes of others. We know how some people can be critical, right? Some people can talk good about you and some people can talk bad. I mean, even the comments on uh, TikTok or, you know, Facebook, wherever, they can be saying something and depending on how they, how they feel, right? Or you can see yourself through the eyes of God, right? When he says in his word, right? This is Psalms 139 and 13 and 14, New King James Version. For you formed... For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. Verse 14, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. And sometimes we begin to question ourselves, right? Why this father? Why this mother? It was a perfect match made in heaven. It's your, your gene pool, watch this, is perfect. For you to go through what you're going through. Because see, you are one of God's greatest creations. A lot of people don't understand that there are things that you may have went through that you haven't even told them. Right? But you made it. And see, sometimes people want to look at, oh, I want to be first. I want to be second. When God just wants you to make it. Right? Because at the end of the day, we just want to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Right? But Genesis 50 and 20, right? New King James Version. But as for me, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. So why would God allow the enemy to do what they do or things to happen, right? Because God said he meant it for good. See, what you are going through has purpose, right? We talked about this, right? You look at Harriet Tubman, right? If it was about her when she got free, she would have stayed free. But if it was about her purpose, she would have went back. Now, what am I saying? Second Corinthians 1 and 4 NLT says the comfort that God has given us when we were in trouble, we are to give others when they are in trouble. So everything that God is allowing you to experience, what you're going through with suicidal thoughts, depression, anxiety, worrying, watch this. God is going to show you how to defeat that. And you're going to show others. See, because when we don't do what God created us to do, watch this, baby girl. This world will suffer, right? Because see, I've been through and I had depression before and I beat it. And guess what? It can't even come back. <laughs> it don't want them problems, right? So 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, New King James Version. Now, this is the scripture that most people look at and they paraphrase and they say, God will not put more on you than you can bear, right? But it says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man, right? But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, when there's temptation, there is always a door that we can walk through and leave. Some of us choose not to, right? Second Corinthians 5 and 7, New King James Version, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We have to be careful where we walk. For example, right, when your child, right, <clears throat> Shalem, right? When she was a baby, there was a point where it was time for her to walk. We make our children walk. Mm -mm, it's time. And that's what God is saying. It's time for you to walk. But God wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. Because when we walk by sight, we can get spiritual frustration, spiritual fatigue, right? We can get depression, worrying, anxiety, all of this. God don't want us to walk by sight. That's why he's saying for we walk by faith, right? Second Corinthians 10, three and six. And this is important, right? New King James version for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Verse four for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. God's weapons are not what we consider regular weapons, right? It says pulling down strongholds, what strongholds, right? The strongholds in our mind, right? Casting down arguments, 
He talked about the voices and stuff like that, right? Casting down arguments at every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought, not some, not many, every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, here's what most people don't understand the other scripture. Verse 6, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your disobedience is fulfilled. See, we are to punish our thoughts, but most people don't understand that. So I'm going to break that down in another segment. And we're going to talk about that, how you are to punish your thoughts. Because you have all these thoughts in your head, how do you punish your thoughts, right? And I got a series going, right? We're talking about, um, this is my drowning season, what some people said. But I'm going to teach people how to drown these thoughts, right? Hebrews 12 and 1, very important, New King James Version. Therefore, also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us so god set a race before us right but many of us right the bible says lay aside every rate but many of us we wear the weight the weight of life the weight of circumstances the weight of finances the weight of family the weight of relationships whatever it is your job like i mean even social media whatever it is and we ask god for stronger shoulders and stronger legs and god like i don't want you to carry it like that right mark and here's another um important part thank you holy spirit mark 4 13 through 20 new king james version and he said to them do not do you not understand this parable how then will you understand all these parables verse 14 the sowers sows the word right verse 15 these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown when they hear right because you can hear something you feel good right satan comes immediately and takes it away the word that was sown in their hearts right? Verse 16, these likewise are ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness because we can be on social media and we can receive it in, in public, receive it with gladness. Verse 17, it says, and they have no root in themselves and so endure for only a time. This is why you can hear something or go to church and just feel good, right? But then guess what? Afterwards, it's like, oh, man, right? Now, Afterward, when the tribulation or persecution arises, life be life and right for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Verse 18. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. These are the ones who hear the word. Verse 19. And the cares or says of other translations say the worries of this world, the deceitfulness of richness, riches, right? People this just trying to get rich, right? And that's all they go for. And the desires for other things ent entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Verse 20, but these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it and bear fruit, some 30 fold, some 60 and some 100. See, I'm going to teach you how to till the ground right where you're going to make sure you know what because you got to till the ground before you plant the seed right and some of us we plant the seed on stony ground and you see what happens right the enemy is like uh oh nah this this word is magnificent so i got to go steal it right so he won us all these thoughts and everything like that and we feel like we're going crazy and all this stuff and suicidal thoughts and everything because he don't want us to focus on god because he's going to go contrary to what the bible says right isaiah 26 and 3 says i will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee god is saying listen baby girl if you keep your mind stayed on me i will keep you in perfect peace but the enemy knows if he can keep your mind stayed on the world he can keep your mind stayed on life your circumstances, your situations, always trying to compare yourself to somebody else, you'll never bear the fruit in what God is trying to talk about. So see, why are you me? Because God called you to be who it is, right? God called you to be who you are. One last verse before we do part two. Jeremiah 29 and 11, King James Version. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. See, God has an expected end for you, but what are you doing? There's some discipline that you have to do when it comes to your life. There's some discipline you have to do when it comes to God's word, right? For we know faith without works is dead, but God is going to teach you how to break generational curses. And guess what? You don't have to do it by yourself. That's why I'm here to help you. 
and watch this over and over again so it can get down into your soul. As always, love y'all. God bless.